Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about two major features coming in Godot 4.0. So the two major features we're going to be talking about is FSR and fog volumes. And both of them are really exciting and really interesting for us as a community because one allows us to control where all the fog is in our scene and the other one allows us to dynamically scale our render resolution to help with performance in our game. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we have to go over is what is FSR? Well, FSR is a spatial upscaling algorithm that delivers near native resolution, quality gaming experiences, with high quality edges and detail. Now that's a lot of words. And really, what does that mean? Well, it's basically an AI assisted upscaling algorithm that helps with performance. So you can see with these two images here, how this one's kind of blurry and this one's not. Well, this is the native resolution that the renderer is rendering at, and then it's upscaling it to this with AI and it's trying to preserve as much details as humanly possible. So what kind of performance are we gonna get? Well, if you look at some other people's benchmarks, you can see a pretty substantial gain with a minimal amount of loss, which is really cool and really great. But how does that translate to Godot? From what I've seen, I was rendering this scene here at about 1080p and you can see that I was getting about 25 FPS with FSR off and I was getting about 31 with FSR set at about 0.8. At about 0.6 I was getting 41 and at 0.4 I was getting a solid 60 FPS and you can see the quality difference here. Um, if we move over to the next slide you'll see that this is kind of the performance gain with degradation here. So it seems like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is kind of where you want to be to get a good performance uplift with a nice looking image. Now, the nice thing about this is FSR is basically free performance for us. It's basically an easy way to gain performance out of your game without losing too much visual quality. Now, something you'll notice is once you get into the really low resolutions, it starts really breaking down. And that's something that's probably gonna get fixed with time and with more bug fixes, FSR will definitely help Godot become an awesome game engine. So that's all great in theory, but how does it work inside of Godot? Well, if we come over to Godot here and we go ahead and come up to our project, project settings, and we go ahead and turn on our advanced settings here, and we scroll down here until we get to our scaling 3D section, we can go ahead and turn on FSR. So you'll see we have mode bilinear. If we click on that and we go down to FSR, it will go ahead and start scaling our viewport and help with our performance. So you can see right now we're getting about 41 FPS, give or take. And once we have this turned on, we can come down here and look at our scale. And our scale is basically the scale at which our render is going to be scaled at, right? So if we have something like 0.8, it's going to take your native resolution that you're rendering this game at, and it's going to drop it down by 0.8. So it's going to multiply it by 0.8, and then it's going to scale it up to match your viewport. So if, so if you think about it, 1920 by 1080 at something like 0.8. So if we scale this down to something like 0.8, what that's going to do is that's going to scale your resolution based off of that number. So if your screen is at 1920 by 1080p, which is a standard screen resolution, 
And that means that it's going to render at 1536 by 864, and then it's going to scale it up to your screen resolution. So it'll take that image of 1536 and scale it up to 1920. And it'll use an AI algorithm to fill in that detail, if that makes sense. And I'll show you in about two seconds. FSR sharpness actually increases the sharpness of your image. And sometimes FSR sharpness can actually make your image look better than actual native resolution. I've seen that happen a few times. Now, if we just go ahead and just drag this up to something like... 1.5 or something pretty high number let's see how that goes and it'll go ahead and increase the sharpness and crispness of your image which can really help with some of that blurriness that fsr brings in and the last one is the fsr mip map bias and what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and try to sharpen up your mip maps and help make your general image look better. So if we actually take this negative values will make it sharper and positive values will actually make it blurrier. It can help you fine tune your FSR settings. So if we drag this down just a tiny bit, something like, you know, minus 0.5, that will allow us to get a little bit nicer, crisper textures. Now for all of this to work, we're going to have to save and restart our editor. So let's go ahead and do that and I will be right back. And you can see previously I was getting about 41 to 40 FPS, but now I'm getting about 52 FPS. So it's a huge uplift in terms of performance. I mean, that's 20%, I think. Let me see, let me do math. That's about 20% uplift in performance. And that's basically free. I mean, you can look at the scene and you can see it looks pretty okay. You know, it's not too shabby. You will notice that there's a lot more shimmer now. If you look up here and you see this, you can see there's a lot more shimmer up here. So you'll probably need to do something like a more intense AA to help blur out some of that artifacting. I don't think I'm using very much AA here. So let me see. I think... Yeah, I'm just doing FXAA. You can actually see if I shut off FXAA, how much shimmer this actually introduces. FSR is a great system at giving you a really nice image without reducing the details nearly as much as other upscaling methods. But at lower resolutions, FSR is going to really hurt your image and you can see it reflected in here when you look at you know you look at some of this and and it really has a lot of shimmer and a lot of blurriness to some of the textures and some of the images but you do gain quite a big performance gain i mean this game or this level would be borderline unplayable without fsr and granted this level's uh 3d level that's used for render time. So it's not really designed for games, but it does show just the power of FSR. Now, the next major feature I'd like to cover inside of Godot is fog volume. Fog volumes was done in a PR, I want to say back in October 29th ish, this was merged. Now, what this did was it added in fog volumes to Godot, and this is huge. This is almost more important than FSR, to be honest with you, because it allows you to go ahead and create volumes of fog. Instead of forcing the entire scene to have fog, you can have just that section have fog. So how does it work in practice? Well, if we go ahead and we go down and we go to our world node and we go ahead and turn on volumetric fog, you'll see that we have volumetric fog, which is cool. If we bring our density down to something really tiny so it's not getting affected by anything and we go ahead and right click and add in a child node and we add in a fog volume here, you will see that a volume of fog has been created and you can see you can actually drag it around and bring it into your scene. So if I actually bring this over here 
and I turn on my gizmos. One thing that I shut off was my gizmos here because gizmos are really finicky inside of Godot right now, especially when you have your environment set up. It gets kind of funky. So if I turn on my gizmos, you can see that I have a little box of fog. So you can see that I have these three points here that I can grab and make larger to increase my fog volume size. So if I actually drag this out, you can see how I can literally build out where my fog is going to be. So let's say I wanted to do a kind of spooky area in here where it's daytime, but it's super foggy kind of thing. I can just go ahead and drag in a fog volume and suddenly I have fog and it's really simple to put together. And if I don't want a box, I can actually change my shape to be anything. So if I go over here in my inspector, you can see I have my extents, which is my actual size of my box. So I can, you know, bring this up and you can see how it changes the size of my box. And if I come over here, I can change the shape. So I can click on box and change it to ellipsoid. You can see now it's a circle. So it's a little circle of fog instead of a box of fog. I can change it to a world, which means it'll affect the entire world, or I can keep it as my little box here. So I'll go ahead and keep it as my little box of fog. Now, what if I want to change this? You can see how my box of fog just kind of exists, right? It's just, it's just this huge, dense fog block, right? Well, what you can do is you can actually come in here and go into your material and add in a new fog material. So if you go ahead and click on that, you can actually change how dense it is, the color of the fog, the emission of the fog, and all sorts of crazy things. So you can actually come in here and say, I want it to be super dense, or I want it to be, or I want it to not be very dense. So if I can kind of bring this down and you can see how the fog kind of is being reduced. So I can give it kind of a slight foggy atmosphere maybe. So it's got kind of that morning fog look to it. So I can bring this down. Just kind of give it that slight creepiness. And, you know, we could actually change our directional light to be more of a slight blue color. Because they always make spooky, spooky movies or spooky uh, stuff is always blue, right? I mean, that's just how it goes. So we'll just go ahead and make it a little darker, maybe. I don't know. Um, but you can see kind of how this works. We can, you know, say, oh, I want a little bit more fog or a little less fog, right? We could change the albedo color to be, you know, like a pink color or a blue color or a green color. So we can have kind of a cool rainbowy fog going on here if we wanted to. Or if we'd like, we can go ahead and add a mission to it which will actually emit light. So if you're baking your lights and things like that, it'll actually emit light and add to your global illumination inside of your scene, which is pretty cool. The next big option is height fall off. So you can actually come in here and adjust the height fall off of your fog. So you can actually come in here and say, okay, as this moves up, and I don't really like that my light has, there, we'll make it back to white. Um, I don't like that my fog goes all the way up to the top of my box here. I don't want it to anymore, right? So if you come up and you kind of drag this all the way up, you can see how the fog just kind of stops right here. But if I drag this back, you can see how it slowly gradiates the fog and puts it on a gradient. So that way your fog only affects the lower half of your box. If I actually drag this box up and I increase the density to something kind of crazy, you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So you can see how the fog goes pretty far up the box. But if I bring this down, you can see how it kind of starts smoothing out that gradient up to that box. So you can see how there's a lot of fog down at the bottom, but not so much at the top. And that's one of the cool features of this little height fall off here. Now edge fall off is very similar to height fall off, but it's to the edge of the box. So you can see how it falls off almost immediately. But if you drag this down, you'll see that it just kind of slowly comes in instead. So you can kind of bring this in 
and rein it in quite a bit. And you'll see that the fog just kind of flows in from the side of the box. So if I drag this down, now I've got kind of a nice little soft fog. As before, we had a big box of fog. And now we kind of have a nice little soft shape of fog, which can help, you know, really dial in your specific look you're going for. And the last option is density texture. Now, density texture is a funky one because it requires you to have a 3D texture and I can't get it to work properly for me. That's not to say that it doesn't work, but I just can't get it to work properly for me. But fog volume is an awesome new addition because it allows us to really put our fog in specific locations. That was one of my biggest gripes about five months ago. I was very unhappy that I couldn't place the fog where I wanted to. So this is a huge step for Godot. But what do you guys think about these features? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're useful? Do you think that they're going to be good for us in the future? Let me know in the comments below because I'm actually really interested in what you guys think about this. What do you guys think about Godot 4? I uh, just downloaded this today, um, and this is the 13th of December. So, you know, I don't know if it's stable or not for you guys yet. But at the time of this recording, it's not super stable, but it's not too bad. In the course of me converting this scene from Blender to Godot, it's only crashed probably a dozen times, which... I know it's kind of crazy because, you know, back when I created my first scene, it crashed at least a hundred times. So it is way more stable than it was before. And something that I have noticed is that it uh, takes a lot longer to load and it takes, and it's a little bit slower on the uptake than previous iterations of Godot. So I'm sure that there's a lot of tweaking and optimizing and changing that they need to make to make this into a great game engine. But I have noticed that it is way more stable. And and I think that that's a, a great thing, especially since, you know, it's just getting better and better. But that's all I have for you guys today. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching. And I will see you all next time. Thanks.